with our campaign. And then I'm going to just introduce the speakers we've got today. Um, we've got some great speakers, uh, members of community organisations, uh, people who've been battling uh, for a long time for community sovereignty, for the rights of communities to have sovereignty over their own resources um, and to protect basically their lives because this is what we're talking about here. We're protecting our water for generations to come. We're looking seven generations ahead to make sure that the people of Christchurch have clean drinkable water. I just want to say um, thanks to you all for going to the trouble of putting together all these posters and banners and letting the powers that be know how you feel about this. We're going to be here for about uh, 45 minutes and then we're going to march to ECAN where we're going to do some more chalking and we might have something else planned there. Um, hey. <laughs> no, we don't have any rocks. We haven't, we haven't got to that stage yet. Um, look, water bottles. Yeah, we've got, we got a few of those, unfortunately. We began this campaign um, with our legal proceedings which we lodged at the start of this year. Those were High Court proceedings to overturn these consents. Just a reminder, these consents are to take 24 million litres of water a day from the, Bel from the Belfast aquifers. A lot of water. Um, we had a preliminary hearing in October this year in the High Court. We think it went very well. We're pretty confident that we might win that. If we win it, it's not the end of the uh, campaign, but it means we go on out to further uh, proceedings and we stay in the fight, which is what we're looking at doing. We've raised $40,000 through the community, through people like you who've given generously. We're probably going to need more money at some stage, but we're confident when we go back to the community, they'll support us again. Now at the moment, um, as you know, Cloud Ocean has lodged an application to take water from a deep bore under the Belfast Aquifer, a, a bore that's at 180 metres deep. That bore and that aquifer also supplies Christchurch's drinking waters. Christchurch City Council have made it clear to ECAN and to the bottling companies that they have grave concerns about that. I think because of our pressure, we got stuck into this and told ECAN how we thought they had to deal with us. They've appointed a commissioner to make the decision on whether to notify this application. If they notify the application, it means the public, every one of us, can make submissions on this application to take water from our drinking water aquifers. If they don't, we don't get a say. One of the grounds that the uh, commissioner makes this decision on is whether there's a high degree of public interest in this application. So we need to show people today that there is a high degree of public interest. We demand the right to be heard on this application. Too much of this has been done behind closed doors and it, uh, it needs to stop. We've got two issues that we're fighting about. The first one is protection of community water. We're talking 24 million litres of water a day. The other thing is that there are a whole heck of a lot of industrial consents sitting out there in Christchurch. The water miners have got their eyes on Canterbury because it's a source of pure drinking water. If all those industrial consents are turned into water bottling consents, you can guarantee that the amount of water taken from aquifers is going to increase by, Lord knows, 10 times probably. Okay? Our water is under threat if we don't win these proceedings and if we're not heard. That's the first ground. The second ground is that ECAN have been bloody hopeless in the way that they've dealt with these consents. Yep. They've broken the law around there. Yeah. And we're demanding that our regulator actually start abiding by the law like they expect the rest of us to do. Yeah. Okay, today we've got some great speakers. We're going to start with Aaron Campbell, who the, um, was the deputy chairperson of the uh, Yearwood um, Waimori, I think. Aaron, I'm Murray here with uh, Community Board until he got demoted for speaking his mind on water bottling. That's what happens when people speak out on behalf of their communities. Um, so Aaron will speak to us first. Uh, we then got Simon Brown, who's um, one of the organisers of um, It's Our Future, which is an anti-TPPA group in Christchurch. Um, and he'll make the link, which is very real, between signing free trade agreements and the threat to our sovereignty. Okay, we've also got uh, other speakers that I'll introduce shortly. 
when we go to Etan, we'll have more speakers, including Sam Mann. Sam Mann might be known to you. He's been uh, a water activist for a long time. He's also very good at doing sculptures of um, ministers for the environment. Um, you may know. Okay, look, I'm going to hand over now, first of all, to Aaron Campbell. Uh, Aaron, thank you.